Hey everybody, back again here for problem number six, uh, 19 marks on this question. It says consider the complex number w equal to z plus i over z plus 2, where z equals x plus i y, and i is obviously the square root of negative 1. It says if w equals i, determine z in the form z equals r cis theta. So if w equals i, then i equals z plus i over z plus 2. So I'm going to multiply both sides by z plus 2, uh, which gives me iz plus 2i equal to z plus i. And after that, I'm going to go ahead and factor out a Oh, got ahead of myself. I'm going to bring the z's together, and so I'm going to subtract 2i from the left side to the right. Uh, that'll give me on the right side a negative i, and on the left side I'll have iz minus z. Factoring out a z, I get i minus 1 is equal to negative i. I'm going to then isolate z by dividing. Oops, I minus 1. And then I'm going to rationalize that denominator by multiplying this by its conjugate. So I get z equals negative i squared minus i, that's sloppy, over. And if I multiply by the conjugate here, I'll get negative 2. Okay, so z equals negative i squared is really positive 1. Okay, negative i squared is a positive 1 minus i over 2. Check that, negative 2. So let's work this up here into a plus bi form, and then we'll get it into cis form. That would be negative 1 half uh, plus i over 2. So the real component is negative half. The imaginary component is half. So that tells me that theta is going to be uh, some factor of pi over 4. All right, and the negative component here and the positive component here tells me quadrant 2. So that isolates theta as 3 pi over 4. Okay, I could sketch this if you wanted me to. I have a triangle that looks like this with negative half and positive uh, half there, which would give me root 2 over 2 there. All right, so this angle here is pi over 4, therefore that angle there is 3 pi over 4. So it looks like z equals root 2 over 2 cis 3 pi over 4. That's probably 3 to 4 marks there. Okay, in part b it says prove that w equals this. So now, this is a bit complex, but if w is z plus i over z plus 2, and z is equal to x plus i, y, then I'm going to do a substitution, and it's going to lead to a whole lot of algebra. What I'm going to need to do is multiply by the complex conjugate of the denominator. However, I have to get it into complex form, and right now it's not there yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take W, and I'm going to write real component and imaginary component. So the only real portion of the numerator is x. The imaginary component of the, den of the numerator is i times 1 plus y. Okay, I see an i, y, and I see an i. So I'm going to factor out an i. So that's real and imaginary right there. And a poorly drawn division symbol. There we go. In the denominator, I have x plus 2 is my real component plus i, y. That's my imaginary component. So the complex conjugate of the denominator will be x plus 2 minus i, y. We'll multiply both top and bottom by that. Okay, this nuance here is very important to see. You go the wrong direction if you don't. 
Okay, so I'm going to do some algebra here off screen. I'm going to come back and explain. You can try it on your own as well, so pause the video and come back and check. All right, so here I am back with some algebra. I just uh, boiled this out, x times x plus 2, x times a negative i, y, get that, i, 1 plus y, times x plus 2. I haven't done any uh, simplifying at all, and then i, 1 plus y, times negative i, y. So I get negative i squared there. And then denominator, love complex conjugates, makes it easy, x plus 2 times x plus 2, x plus 2 squared, and then i, y times negative i, y, which is negative i squared, y squared. Okay, I'm going to continue to simplify here, but now I'm going to do it uh, on screen real time. So I'm going to go ahead and do some work. Okay, so I'm going to put together the real components of the numerator. So this will be real, and so will this, right? Negative i squared will end up being positive 1. So I'm going to get uh, x squared plus 2x plus y squared plus y. There's a real component in the numerator, okay? Imaginary component numerator. I'm going to get negative ixy. And then I get this thing. It's going to get kind of nasty. So I'm going to factor out an i. And then I'm going to do some work with all of that. Okay. So that will be, uh, I think, a positive. Well, let's see what happens here. Okay. So I've got, let's factor out an i. So that'll be negative xy. Uh, plus, and then I'm going to foil this thing out. That'll be x plus xy plus 2 plus 2y. Two okay, so it looks like these two here and here will cancel, and I get x plus 2y plus 2. Okay, so that will be, again, will be positive. Okay, because those two negate each other. So I'll get x plus 2y plus 2. And when I say negate each other, this negative symbol that was here is gone because those reduce. Okay. Denominator. Um, it looks like, from what I'm looking for in the end, I'm not looking to do a whole lot there. So... I'm just going to understand that negative i squared is just a positive 1. So I'll have x plus 2 quantity squared plus y squared. Let's see if I'm where I want to be here. I think I am. Yeah, we're good. Check, right? Real component, check. Imaginary component, check. Denominator, check. All right, let's move on to part C. It says, hence, show that the real component of w is equal to 1. When the real component is equal to 1, the points x, y lie in a straight line, L1, and write down its gradient. So gradient will be the slope of L1. L1. Cool. All right, so if the real component of w equals 1, and what that means is that x squared plus 2y plus y squared plus y. Oops, I messed something up there. Yes, I did. This should be x, okay, over x plus 2 quantity squared plus y squared should equal 1. That's the real component. The real component of w. Okay, That's got to equal 1. What that means then is x squared plus 2x plus y squared plus y has to be equal to x plus 2 squared plus y squared in order for that ratio to equal 1. Okay, so I'm going to expand this side. That side comes out to be, oops, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's right. I'm going to expand that side. 
that'll end up being x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus y squared. Okay. Notice, I've got an x squared here and here. I've got a y squared here and here. Normally that's pretty hard to deal with, but those will reduce out. And so what I'm left with is 2x plus y is equal to 4x plus 4, which means y is equal to 2x plus 4. And the gradient of L1, which would be 2x plus 4, its gradient would equal 2. Awesome. All right, let's move on to part D. Hopefully we can get this done relatively quickly. And it looks like they gave us a pi over 4, which is great. It says, given that the argument of z is equal to argument of w is equal to pi over 4, find the modulus of z. Recall that z is equal to x plus i, y. Okay, so if the argument of z is equal to pi over 4, then what's true is that the real component and imaginary component would have to be equal. And since it's in quadrant one, then x and y are both greater than zero. Okay, so therefore, like I said, we know that the real component of z is equal to the imaginary component of z. Thus, x squared plus 2x plus y squared plus y over x plus 2 squared plus y squared has to equal x plus 2y plus 2 over x plus 2 squared plus y squared. Now here I had written real portion of z and imaginary portion of z. I should have said real portion of w and imaginary portion of w. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because I am going to end up solving for x and y here. Okay, because x and y will give me the components, real and imaginary, for z. Okay, so if these two are equal, I clearly don't care about their denominators. All that I care about working with is their numerators. Okay, so I see x squared plus 2x plus y squared plus y equal to x plus 2y plus 2. I also know since we are at pi over 4 for the argument, then x equals y. Therefore, for every y, I'm going to plug in an x. So this would be x squared plus 2x plus another x squared, right? I'm subbing in an x for this y. I'm also going to sub in an x for this y. Same thing over here. So that tells me I have 2x squared plus 3x's is equal to 3x's plus 2. Okay, these 3's will reduce. 2x squared is equal to 2. That means x squared is equal to 1. That means x equals either plus or minus 1. Well, we said before at the beginning of the problem, as you can see up here, that x and y have to be greater than 0. Therefore, I know that x has to equal positive 1. Well, if x has to equal positive 1 and x equals y, then y also has to equal positive 1. Therefore, z has to be 1 for x plus 1 for y is the imaginary component. Therefore, z is equal to 1 plus i. And thus, the modulus of z, if I draw out this triangle... I get a real and an imaginary of 1 and 1. That means the modulus has to be root 2. There you have it, guys. That is a uh, 19 mark question. Uh, it's pretty loaded. It's loaded with information regarding trig, regarding some algebra, as well as uh, just some funky stuff mixed in there. So I hope it went well. Let me know if you need any help. Shoot me a question if you got them. Have a good day.